My Aunt Ticia loved to watch soap operas every day, religiously. She called them her stories, so spending time with her meant that days of our lives in Santa Barbara became a part of my life. By the time I was seven years old, I knew that true love was no match for Stefano de Mera. Today we look at soap operas on this episode of Life and Stuff. If you dig what I do, please like and subscribe. Soap opera began on the radio in the 20s as daytime serial dramas, epic stories of relatable young attractive people going through ridiculous trials and tribulations. As radio evolved into television, the cyclic stories that could entertain endlessly was perfect for TV stations too. Soap companies like Procter & Gamble produced these shows as a platform to sell soap, from floor wax to baby shampoo, to their home-making target audience. Now, sometimes the scripts on these shows suffered, but since the writers are writing a 40 or 60 page script every day, the actors don't have any real time to rehearse, so sometimes you end up with stuff like this. He's blind as a bat anyway, so you don't have to hide. Good evening, Father. Why did you stop my car? Is something wrong? I don't know who you are, but I know there is evil in this car. And I'm here to stop the evil now. No! 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 What are you doing? Stop! Stop! Or you might even get stuff like this. No family on this earth that would have put up with so much garbage as the Ryans have with you. I mean, you drove Pat to amphetamine. Now, wait a minute. That was not my fault. He was working too hard. You were chasing him around neurology and the Oh, I came you, damn it. And it's high time somebody said it to your face. You drove Pat to drive nobody else. Things like this happen, too. Soaps are the masters of cliffhangers. A good one will put you on the edge of your seat and keep you there until the commercial break, or even over the weekend. Gary! Uh, I was just looking for the sports channel, Gary. What makes soap operas addictive to the point where millions of viewers tune in and sometimes special events, tens of millions of viewers tune in? Don't ask. A lot, a lot goes into them. In movies and stories, many of us often relate with the character from a story we like. Soap opera characters are often naive and two-dimensional. Sometimes it's bad acting. Sometimes it's on purpose. As humans, we are always projecting our thoughts and feelings onto other things and people. You will fill in the gaps of the two-dimensional character with your own relatable fantasy. The character's personality is made slightly incomplete so that you can insert yourself in them. Soaps play on a lot of subconscious elements. Plus, watching some of the hottest and sexiest models and actors in some of the industry's best clothes and makeup is appealing. Scientific studies have shown that people like watching attractive people. But wait, there's more. How do you make great looking people look even better? Well, before cell phone filters back in the day, you had to lie to them the old fashioned way, face to face. Backlighting is everything. It makes the subject stand out from the background, creating a nice depth of field, making just about every shot that a character is in look just like a portrait. Most movies are filmed at 24 frames a second, and it gives it that blur and a slight dreamy quality. It is the standard for major motion pictures. Most TV shows are filmed at about 30 frames a second, the same as most cell phones and YouTube videos. They have very little motion blur and look very video-y, but soaps are filmed at around 24 frames per second, usually on videotape, and then shown on a TV screen that is capable of displaying 60 frames per second. 
This is possible using computers to do motion interpolation. In other words, the computer takes two frames and creates a synthetic third frame and sticks it in between the two real frames, and this makes it look glossy, dreamlike. Is he the only one, or are there others? How many other men have you been with, oh, Eve? DC, please, you're the only man that I ever loved. Then how the hell can you cheat on me with Julian Crane, a man that I hate with a passion? I never cheated. That picture was taken before we were married. I don't give a damn, Eve. Look at it. It's disgusting. It's pornographic, just like you make me feel right now. Oh, no, Repulsive. Don't say that, DC, please. I believe in you. I thought that you and I had a wonderful life. A life that was built on love, trust, and honesty. But you deceived me, Eve. You're not the woman I fell in love with all those years ago. You're not, and you never were. Please let me explain. I can explain. No, you can't explain. I'm taking the kids, and I'm filing for divorce, and I don't ever want to see your lying face again. No. No, please don't leave me. Stay away from me, Eve. Right now, you are out of my life. My kids don't have a mother. You are not my wife. You're dead to me, Eve. You are dead! <laughs> yeah, let's talk about plot lines. Recently, I binge watched over 200 episodes of Passions, along with years of previous soap watching. Soap opera plots can be broken down into a few categories, like love triangles or love squares, blackmail, sibling rivalry of biblical proportions, troubled marriages, disrupted weddings, affairs. Temporary amnesia. Medical miracles. Snitching. Because soap opera characters will tell the truth on you at the worst possible time. I came here to talk to Rafe alone. Well, now is definitely not a good time. I don't really care if it's a good time for you or not. It's a good time for me, and I'm not leaving here until I say what I have to say. Great. Another famous plot line is accidental incest. I just want to be a part of your life. You're the most important part. Max and Stephanie have fallen in love. I love you, Max Brady. I love you too. Now, nothing can come between them, except maybe him. I've known about you for a while now. Known what? That he's my father. Days of our lives. And then there's my personal favorite, immortality. Immortality. That's when a character returns to the show after being killed off. Like in one of my favorite soaps, Dark Shadows. The most horrible death imaginable. No, Angelique. It is you who will face destruction. No! You will die by fire the death no! you deserve. Soaps have declined over the years. Many shows have been canceled and the heyday of the American daytime drama seems to be passing. Meanwhile, in the rest of the world, it is full swing like Turkey, Greece, Korea, Japan, Nigeria. Soap operas from India. And of course, the huge Spanish-speaking community of the telenovela. What is a telenovela? Think of it as a soap opera that eventually comes to an end in about two or three years. Like, this one is great. 
In the first episode, she is hit by a car at her wedding. Mirado! They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. To me as a kid, watching these shows in between helping my aunt with housework and making lunch was some of the happiest time spent at my grandma's. Perhaps as a young boy, fantasizing about romance under the influence of soap operas could have affected my future relationships. I've been told I'm quite melodramatic sometimes. I have actually had full retrograde amnesia while my wife was four months pregnant with our first child, if that counts as dramatic. Soap opera theme music is beautiful. Just listen to a sample of these. So in honor of soap operas past, present, and hopefully future, I decided to make my own opening for a make-believe soap opera. And I want you to check it out. And last but not least, when I was in high school, I used to sometimes watch Spanish soap operas and imagine I knew what they were saying. So on that note, I'm going to leave you with this. <laughs> 